Some of the most memorable action games I've ever played are 2012's Max Payne 3 and 2005's Fear, and Trepang 2 cashes in hard on those memories of slow motion action and strong enemy AI and variety. Yes, it's really called Trepang 2. No, it has nothing to do with the sea cucumbers of the same name. Instead, this is a first-person stealth action shooter that's tilted decidedly toward action. It's got plenty of excellent running and gunning, and while its story isn't all that frightening, there are occasional successful jump scares that mix up the near-constant mayhem of battling its surprisingly smart commandos and corporate cultists. We are fragments and unimaginative minds. Granted, it's also a little bit short if you're only focused on its main objectives, but that just means it never outstays its welcome. Trepang 2's brisk 6-12 hour campaign puts you into the boots of Subject 106, a generic super soldier type working for the equally unimaginative Secret Task Force 27. After escaping a chilly underground Alaskan prison, you spend the next 10 or so hours in pursuit of the evil overlords of the Horizon Corporation, a Dr. Evil-like entity that's notorious for its failed attempts at creating its own super soldiers, among other evil schemes. What ensued was a series of video game and action movie cliches, executed with such over-the-top violence that I had no problem suspending my disbelief, often in unimpeded bliss. That is, except for when Trepang 2's gimmicky and cheap monsters popped on screen in classic jump scare fashion. Before the story just sort of forgot about their existence entirely, thrusting me right back into its gory military shooter inspired action without more than a shrug and an occasional intel entry with, you know, some sort of grotesque drawing on it. But let's be clear, these monster encounters are perfectly fun. I'm just disappointed that Trepang 2 doesn't lean into them even more. Some excellent setups, like a creepy homage to the Backrooms meme, create a dark atmosphere to set some fights in. But they don't keep the story's attention more than one segment of one level at one time apiece. There's no character like Fear's Alma Wade keeping the steady tension of a more personal horror story rolling under the waves of Trepang 2's action, and as a result, the Horizon Corporation and all of its monsters come across as satirical rather than spooky. But there's little indication that that's done on purpose. At its best, Trepang 2 is a clear tribute to the dreary, blood-drenched shooters of the mid to late 2000s but without all the added melodrama to slow down its pacing between battles a la Fear 2 or Doom 3. Most of the time, it deftly connects the corridors of its various military compounds and corporate strongholds with a steady supply of boss fights that are often fun but simple, in that they rely on a single gimmick. The Mothman, for instance, chases you around a maze-like structure and can only take damage on specific parts of his body that are easiest to hit while he's spitting acid. Meanwhile, each level's nooks and crannies are littered with weapon customization parts and bits of intel to gradually explain what's going on, which turns out to not be that interesting. Halfway through the first level, you're already introduced to Subject 106's nifty cloak and time-slowing focus abilities. Mixed with a button that lets you dive into a crouching position whenever you want, these abilities give you superhuman prowess in most situations. But not so much that Trepang 2 ever made me feel overpowered, at least once I turned the difficulty up a notch or two. I'm not much of a stealth player, and it always seemed like the cooldown timer for my cloak ability was a bit too long for my tastes anyway, so I generally forgot about it. And I didn't miss it, because great level design is far more important to stealth than a lazy invisibility button. Trepang 2 often lets you just shoot out lights to pass under the cover of darkness, or set some traps for a good old gilly up time. It's especially important to remain versatile, since there are often so many enemies on screen at once, and they will relentlessly group up on you or flank you, and they do appear to communicate your position to one another. This all speaks to its excellent open-ended combat across its six primary and six side missions, wherein its eight highly customizable weapons gave me just as much leeway to simply dive into the action and kill everyone in sight on my own terms. 
The rhythm of Trepanga 2's combat isn't really about choosing the right gun. Every weapon is viable in every battle, whether you're dual wielding assault rifles or finessing your way through enemy squads with a single handgun. Instead, it's all about carving out the right approach. Aside from the rank and file enemy soldiers armed with SMGs and pistols, many of Trepang's enemy types are shielded or armored and only vulnerable to headshots. Some come equipped with long-range firearms and will scurry around the outskirts of a battle to pick you off when you stray out of cover, and some will even chase you around with explosives in hand. Each enemy demands a different approach, and my favorite moments were when I was surrounded on all sides with a vast array of different variants, forcing me to improvise rather than stick to any specific weapon or tactic. Pistols, SMGs, shotguns, assault rifles, and DMRs can all be dual-wielded once you find the hilariously titled Dual Wield Serum, and it adds an extra dimension to gunplay in that you can become lethal at close range while dual-wielding any weapon, though you'll still struggle to pick off enemies from afar. Likewise, it's slightly disappointing you can only dual-wield identical weapons, so there's no mixing and matching a shotgun with an SMG, but it pays off with a gratifying spectacle when you decimate a crowd of armored bad guys in slow motion, brandishing two shotguns or assault rifles like toys. The reload animation when dual wielding two unfolded shotguns will never cease to make me laugh. Adding to the frenzy of Trepang 2's combat is a melee button that feels great to use, and it lets you beat your enemies down or unleash a Spartan kick once you've closed the gap making it easy and often hilariously fun to direct the flow of the carnage in slow-mo. It's great that you can pick up different parts as collectible items in each mission, but it's a slight disappointment that you can't alter your loadout just anywhere. Every add-on comes with a drawback that's described in text, such as the pistol's laser sight making you more visible to enemies, or the shotgun's unfolded stock making reload time slower in exchange for better recoil. So it all feels balanced and often broadens the number of viable playstyles available. Trepang 2's wild action also consistently looks awesome. Sparks and blood fly in all directions at gloriously high frame rates in 2K resolution at max settings on PC, even when the action seems like it should be too much to handle for my now aging GeForce RTX 2080 Super. Some levels are drab and colorless, like a typical shooter from the Xbox 360 era, but its action truly comes together in some of its more detailed environments. In the Horizon HQ area, for instance, the Festival of Carnage is contrasted against arrays of LED panels refracting colorful waves of light across the tower's glimmering marble floors. I've seen better, of course, but it rarely stuttered or lurched to a halt even when tens of things were happening at once, giving an almost consistently smooth shoot-em-up experience from start to finish. A decently sized hub area ties everything together between missions, and this is where you can customize your loadout and restock your armor and equipment, or train in the infinitely replayable combat sim. There's also some extra replayability here, if you're willing to stretch out Trepang 2's slim campaign with increasingly tough challenges. Though, those just involve beating the same missions over and over again at higher difficulty levels. This puts you in front of tougher boss fights, including some that only appear at higher levels. In exchange for all the trouble, you unlock some cheat codes and some secret gags. Granted, they're delightfully old school and range from things like infinite ammo to a big head mode that makes shooting bad guys in their faces that much sillier. And hey, at least it's a chaotic joy to go back through the campaign with those different configurations of cheats, especially because of how easy it is to just toggle them on and off from a menu. <laughs> Trepang 2 is a delightful tribute shooter that brings the relentless yet intelligent and often creative action of games like Fear to the modern standards of 2023. Its diverse enemy encounters and smart level design are top-notch, though it's less successful when it occasionally dips into lukewarm survival horror elements, and that's when it becomes apparent that it could have really used a stronger story and better scares. In light of all that, it's wise that it leans harder on action than stealth throughout, often keeping pace with the best first-person shooters when firefights heat up. 
However, it still ends a bit more quickly than I'd have hoped, even after padding out its length in higher difficulty modes and side missions. Trepang 2 feels like a strong prototype for a Trepang 3 that pairs this great action with a less paint-by-numbers story and an extended campaign. But in the meantime, I'll happily go back in and play it all over again with the myriad cheats I've already unlocked. For more, check out our reviews of Starship Troopers Extermination Early Access and Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun. And for everything else, stick with that GN.